Hi guys, I trust uh, you are uh, all okay. So uh, yesterday we had a class of our public finance and taxation. Remember yesterday in the morning, uh, we did, uh, I, gave, I did a video in relation to revisions for public finance and taxation and uh, management accounting. So in the evening, we did uh, public finance and taxation. And uh, I was uh, very concerned because I realized that uh, majority of the students actually who attended is like, you guys, you don't have the current notes for public finance. I'm not sure which notes uh, you're using, but uh, based on the sample that I collected from the students who attended uh, yesterday's uh, class, as if you don't have actually the current notes for public finance, and that is dangerous. And I think that could be some of the reasons why public finance and taxation was not performed well last semester, whereby probably you're using the notes, you, you think that they are current, but <laughs> unfortunately they are not current. So what uh, I'm going to do, basically, those who are interested, right? Those who are interested with the current notes more so for public finance, kindly just inbox us. Kindly just inbox us on our number via WhatsApp, of course, 0708-068-851. So at least uh, we'll share this uh, latest or rather the updated notes for public finance and taxation. Because remember, like uh, this area for theory, this area for theory will contain almost up to 40%. These are basically marks that can take you places you've never been before. So it is very important to balance all this. And remember like uh, public finance, basically it has uh, almost six topics. These topics which are very important because if you do a sample in uh, of course uh, your, your past papers, you will realize that in this case, there are so many, so many marks in relation to theory. So kindly take uh, that note and make sure at least you have the updated notes for public finance integration. I was uh, very concerned on that. And that's why I've decided, like, uh, you know, what? as much as I was, I was supposed to do maybe a video later on in the evening, I just mentioned that uh, I've just decided, like, uh, let me share with you guys now so that uh, whoever that is interested, basically you can reach out so that we assist you this notes for public finance taxation. Still, those who are interested, of course, you can uh, join our group. I shared the link yesterday. I'm also going to share the same, same link in uh, this segment today. I want to show you guys what we did yesterday. Yesterday we started our revision for public finance and taxation. And uh, in that case, uh, I gave an overview of what is expected, what you guys should embrace, or rather what you guys you must be very good at. And we went ahead and do our own question in our block revision. So these are what I want to share with you. So at least uh, both of us should uh, gain uh, from what uh, we studied. So this is a, uh, let me just share right now so that at least we should all be on the same page. So these are what you did. I'm sharing it right now. The relationship between relationship. These are uh, relationship. Pick up for that video. Relationship bit, but, uh, aspect of our county government. Is going to that set is up. between our national and the county government and the county government. This is between our national government and county government when it comes to matters of uh, the budget and uh, the economic matters. That is also sure. very important that you should be able to understand. Uh -huh. After that, we will find that uh, topic number three. That is the oversight function in public financial management. Topic number three. Topic number three. At this point, should be expected to understand the whole concept of our uh, oversight function. Oversight function. Oversight function. And if you don't have this note for public finance, remind Molly after class to share with us because we are with this is basically a recording on what you did yesterday. So I'll allow you guys to watch the class till the end then I think we can, we can continue from there. Yeah, you just enjoy the class, enjoy the class. Very important. Oversight function in a public finance management, in a public finance management, oversight function in public finance management. 
that will also be very important on our end. Talk about topic number four. Topic number four is all about procurement. Topic number four is all about uh, procurement. So I'll be dealing with the procurement in public entities. This is topic number four, procurement. That is the procurement, of course, in uh, public, in, uh, that is the procurement in public entities. In public entities, in public entities, procurement in public entities. And uh, the other bit here, which is uh, topic number five, Topic number five, of course, we will be expected to cover a concept to do with a public-private partnership arrangement, what we normally term it as well as people think. Also, this one is uh, very notorious in exam. The concept of participle P is also very notorious in our in our examinations. The concept of people P is very notorious in your exams. In addition to that, if I follow you at top of uh, topic number six, in this case, We'll be having public debt management. Topic number six. This aspect with the public debt management. Public debt management here. Public debt management. Now, this is what I want us to do. Remember, we have to do this strategically. We have to do this strategically. Section A, in terms of our study, is what now we are referring to public finance. And Key areas that you must be very good when it comes to this theory of public finance. Make sure you are very good in your own studies. You see, topic number six, I'm going to mark them. Topic number six, make sure you're very good at that. Topic number five, you are very good at that. Aspect to do with topic number four. And basically, topic number one. I'm not saying that the rest you should ignore. But these are very notorious in the exams. Introduction to PFM, understanding the whole basis. Topic number four, procurement in public entities. Uh, the concept, of course, to all of you, I know you've, uh, you've, uh, you're familiar with uh, what happened during the period in 2021, the aspect with cancer. Right now, we have uh, so many, so many issues, or rather so many cases. All of them, they evolve around the concept of procurement. You'll find that that's why it is very notorious also in our examination. That is topic number four, procurement in public entities. Public private partnership, where the whole idea of participle uh, fee is whereby the government they do collabo with the private entities to deliver on services and products that most most of services that are going to benefit the whole, the whole uh, citizens as a whole. So you'll find that uh, basically for P is also very common. Public debt management. At this point, of course, the government wants to raise more, wants to raise more, more, more revenue. And in raising more revenue, of course, you'll find that part of that revenue that you're looking at to finance, whatever that we are doing finance as a government, a component of it will be component of debt. So therefore, how are we supposed to make sure that we manage this debt very effectively? To the point that we will be having wastages. To the point that we can see probably developments in relation to whatever that we collected and whatever that we borrowed. To the point that topic number six is very interesting, very practical, and also very notorious in exam. So for our case of revision, we we'll just be going through questions. But if you find time, the moment I've shared these documents with you. Make sure that you've gone through it very uh, clearly and deeply. You'll find that it's a very interesting, it's a very interesting area. So here is section one, public finance. We are talking of roughly like almost 40 percent. We are talking of roughly almost like 40 percent, almost 40 percent. We are talking of almost 40 percent. So we should be very good with that. We are talking of almost 40 percent. It should be very good in relation to that. Any question on this first part before we proceed to the chapter two, or rather the second section? Uh, first, has any question in relation to that, Brief? Yes, Malimu, I have a question. When the examiner is testing this part of uh, theory, does he twist the question so much, Ama, it's direct from the notes? Let me give you a trick. 
In this case, you'll never be given the rec. Or at times, like uh, like uh, like uh, the concept of uh, public, uh, not public procurement can be direct. Introduction to PFM can be direct. But this, uh, the rest will be insisting mainly on the concept. You have read the whole notes. Make sure that you're not studying to cram. Make sure that you're studying to understand. So that in that case, we find that they are going to twist it. Let me show you just from our model paper. You see, like, uh, let me just show you just from our model paper so that you understand what I'm talking about. On this model paper of ours, on this model paper of ours, uh, just check on this model paper so that you see how basically questions are always affected. Uh, take this one out, like, uh, you know, this one, this one you have it in theory. Like, uh, check, for example, number 20, question one. Just check, for example, uh, question number one. Uh, that is, uh, sorry. Uh, so that you understand how these questions are really tested. Question number one, yes, you have the notes, but the most important thing would be how have you understood the notes? So that's how they normally tend to test. That is the new trend, actually. And that's the reason why last semester a lot of students say that. That's the reason why last semester a lot of students say that. Because majority of them, they were doing it for the purpose of cramming the notes. And that was the big, biggest mistake that majority of them made last, last semester. They were they were studying the notes to come. So, uh, uh, first time, have you seen how the question can be tested? Yes, yes, I've seen how the examiner can twist the questions. Thank okay. you, Marlene. Okay, just a matter of uh, yes, you have the notes, you've studied everything, but the question is, did you study to understand or did you study basically to cram? So that's why you find that majority of the students last semester they did fail that paper. Uh huh. Eunice, you're good. Question? Good. Great. Uh, Dan, question? Uh huh. Bernard, question? Sorry for that. Any question, Bernard? But dear my friend, how are you? I'm fine, my name. You're good? Yes, yes, thank you. Any question on that? Uh, I don't know. No question? Yes. Great. Lisa. I just joined, I haven't, I did not get the concept, but I'll go on. Okay, great. The concept in the next. Okay. Ruth, Ruth, uh, Ruth, Johnny, audio, Ruth, uh, Jengena, audio, Ruth, Johnny, audio. So, uh, this is uh, what you are doing in a uh, separate segment. Ruth, Ruth, join with audio, so that you can listen to Molimu. Ruth, join with audio. Okay, Ruth? Ruth, join with audio. So basically, this was uh, section one, whereby we are talking of uh, the theory part. Now, here comes an interesting bit, where in this case now we're talking of taxation, because we, we mentioned 
that I'll be having to face this, right? I'll be talking over public finance, and I'll be talking of the aspect with taxation. So whatever that you've analyzed, you literally analyze public finance segment. So now, what about the second segment, which is uh, taxation? What about the second segment? Which is a uh, which is a uh, taxation, which is a uh, taxation, hmm? which is a uh, taxation. That is what I want us to talk about. So we are having the second segment. So we agreed that uh, public finance has six topics. Public finance has six topics, which you literally look at them. Here comes an area to do with taxation now. So tax, in that case, starting with, uh, of course, uh, introduction to taxation, starting with uh, introduction to taxation, introduction to taxation. This is also theory bit. This is topic number seven. Introduction to taxation. Introduction to taxation. This is a theory bit and very important because also this case out of the theory that we've listed, also introduction to taxation will also form a larger part because at this point it will be important for you to be able to understand matters to do with the principles of taxation, classification of tax, size of taxation is so wide. So if you don't have a proper notes or if you're not sure if are you having the proper notes, after class, you can engage Molimu to share updated notes in relation to what? Introduction to tax. That is uh, very key. Then after that bit, you'll find that uh, we will be expected basically to talk about topic number eight. Topic number eight is all about taxation of income of person. Taxation of income of persons. Taxation of income of persons. At this point, let me look at my red pen. I want to mark it with red. To stress how important this concept is. To stress how important this concept is. Taxation of income of persons. 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 We've agreed and said that in our tax component, in our tax component, we will be having like 60%. That is what we've said. Out of these 60%, my good students, you will realize that out of the 60%, if I told you to term it as 100, majority of the questions, majority of the questions, like almost Two, like three questions in computation, almost three questions in computation will come from this topic, taxation of income of persons. So it will be important for us to understand this taxation of income of persons, what will it constitute? What will it constitute? This taxation of income of persons, what will it constitute? That's what I want us to look at right now. So, uh, just a moment here. Mm -hmm. So in point that uh, on taxation of income of persons, the concept that you'll always be expected to basically understand, we'll be talking of, it will be very important for you to understand the concept to do with employment income. Employment income. At this point, it will also be important for you to understand the concept to do with taxation of partnership. It will be important for you to understand the concept to do with taxation of limited companies. 
other areas, concepts which were introduced. I don't know if you guys you have this notes or you know these things. You know this concept that was attested last semester, which I know majority of the students who are not ready for it. You see, like uh, there is this concept which was introduced. Aspect to do with the uh, concept to do with the uh, capital gain tax, CGT. Capital gain tax. And this was tested last meeting. Capital gain tax, known as CGT. We also have the aspect to do with the uh, digital tax services. Digital tax services. This is some of the things that were introduced. And I, and I know majority of the students, they don't have this or they don't know if this things are here now. So we'll find that uh, amongst other items, also to do with the uh, aspect of, uh, of course, uh, this uh, taxation to do with the uh, rental income. All these concepts now will fall here. So out of our calculation area, out of our calculation area, you'll find that this area will constitute a lot of marks. It will carry a lot of, a lot of marks. So you should be ready. You should be ready and you should be very perfect in these areas, employment, partnership, company, capital gain tax, digital tax services. This one is more of theory. That one is more of theory. You should be very good. You should be very good at that. Then after that bit, of course, looking at it as we continue, will also be required here to understand topic number nine. Topic number nine is all about uh, capital allowances, investment allowances, that is investment allowances. And the investment allowances, my new students, what you should be having in mind is for us to be able to understand first of all of the new rates. Remember like uh, what you used to do before, where under WTA, we were talking of what WTA, we are talking of class one, class two, class three, class four. Remember, we don't have that now. We don't have class one, class two, class three, class four. No, we don't have that on now. Now, under WTA, we are talking of only class A and class B. Class A and class B only. Right? Class A and class B. This is under WTA. You used to know of class one, class two, class three, class four. But now we don't have class one, class two, class three, class four. No, we only have class A and class B. These are some of the things that majority of students last semester, they weren't also ready for. For them, probably they were using the previous notes. So they used to build the note class one, class two, class three, class four, which is not in existence today. So nowadays we are talking of only class A, class B. Class A, Ideally, you are talking of 25% plus B, you're reading off the aspect of 10%. The aspect of ID. There are some items in ID which were not there before, but right now they are there. There are items in ID which, in that case, we were considering different percentages, but now we have different percentages that we are looking at them. So at the same time, as much as I know probably you're doing your self-study, the question that you're going to ask yourself, are you reading the right thing? Are you studying the correct note? To avoid what happens, make sure that you are studying the right notes. Make sure that at least you are the good, uh, at least uh, paid. Because these are some of the things that wasted a lot of students last semester. So make sure that you are studying the right notes. So that is in relation to investment allowances, which again, At any given point in time, the probability of investment allowance to come in your paper is always like 0 0.8. Probability of investment allowance to come in your exam is 0 0.8, making it one of the crucial topics that it should be in your fingertips, making it one of the crucial topics that it should be in your fingertips. So, after we are done with that bit, that should take us to basically administration of income tax. That is topic number 10. Topic number 10. Topic 10. Administration 
administration of income, administration of income tax, administration of income tax, administration of income tax and procedures. Administration of income tax and procedures. Is a big point whereby you will be tested on the concept of withholding taxes. It is a big point whereby you will be tested on the concept of paying NSSF, explaining them in detail, explaining them in detail. Majority of this part is also theoretical, but again, very important theory, very important theory. So that is our topic number 10. Topic number 11, we are going to mark this as an aesthetic as well. Topic 11 is all about matters to be about administration of VAT. Administration of VAT. We mark this topic with an asterisk. We mark this topic with an asterisk. This is an asterisk. Important topic, very important topics. So administration of VAT, we understand that of course we have a new app. But remember this new app will not affect you guys, this coming uh, sitting or any paper for tax that we're going to do this year. The Finance Act 2023 will literally affect those who will be doing tax probably in 2024. It will literally affect those who will be doing tax in 2020, but as it is now, you'll find that the VAT that we are be talking about more so for fuel, it will just be the 8%. There are some other items which initially they were not zero rated under the new Finance Act, they are zero rated. So this case will not affect us, will not affect us, will not affect us. Then that should take us to basically topic number 12. Topic number 12 here, it will be a matter of us to basically understand what we are referring to as what the custom taxes. Also, this one is theory. That one is theory. Then, of course, we are having what? Uh, miscellaneous fees. In this case, you are having topic number 13, which is the last one. We are having miscellaneous fees. Miscellaneous, miscellaneous fees. Miscellaneous fees. We are having miscellaneous. We are having miscellaneous fees. We are having miscellaneous fees. That one is also very, very important. So up to this point, guys, aren't you guys to ask Molimu question before we proceed? Aren't you guys to ask Molimu question before before we proceed? Before we before we proceed. Uh -huh, question. Malimu, can I ask my question? Um, kindly ask, please. On topic number eight, can we expect more than uh, two questions, three from each of the subtopic? They normally come, they can come three. They can, it can come employment partnership as well as company at once. Like last, like last semester, we had uh, employment, we had partnership, we had company, and we had capital gain. Both of them. So here, here majority of the question will come. Like uh, it can come either all or it majority. Most of the times, employment partnership company they normally tend to come together. Maybe you are given like a visa, like a like ten, like a ten or fifteen marks with a theory. This one maybe you are given say like a ten marks. They combine with a capital gain another ten marks. So we normally can come all of all of them together. Yes, is that okay? Yes, yes. Thanks so much. Good. Ruth, question. Before I proceed, I want to start now our revision officially. Dan, Eunice, Lisa, question over here. I'm okay, my name. I'm also okay, Marimu.
Dan, you think you're having a question? No, uh, Malimu, I'm okay so far. Great. Uh, Lisa, you're having a question based on the analysis? But yeah. Yes, my name, I'm okay. Great. So then let us start our revision officially. And uh, of course, as I've mentioned, we're going to use our past our, 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 our model paper. You'll find like uh, I'm going to go through uh, let us start with this uh, question in our model paper, believing that right now all of us we do have that model paper. We start with uh, there's this question for cut You know, majority of us uh, we are not familiar with capital gain, even in your studies, probably you've not even seen that in your notes. I want us to check in our model paper, let us jump to question number. This is question number three. Question number three, part C, I'm going to explain more of that. So I'm also going to handle part A and part B, but I want us to check first of all. But see, this is a this is a question number. You see, question number three basically uh, explain the following terms as this integration. That one is basically topic number seven. But B, these are the normally change type. You can find that uh, topic. Question number three A, that is topic number topic number seven. You'll find that uh, the aspect of uh, part B, that was uh, what we looked at under public finance, the aspect of public private partnership. Then I'm having part C, where now I'm talking of public uh, study topic number eight. So you'll find that they always mix question like that. They always mix question like that. So is there anyone of us here? Who has gone through aspects to do with uh, this aspect that we're referring to as a CGT capital gain? Anyone with an idea of what capital gain is? Actually, this question, you see this question, I've literally lifted it up from whatever that was stated last sitting. This question for CGT, question number three, Shebe Allah. You see this question? If you check, if you check, uh, aren't you going to check uh, our, that is of course, uh, La sitting. Let me just share with you so that you can see what Molina is saying. I need to check uh, 2023. That is uh, TFT 2023. Open. Okay. Check this question out with you students. And you can literally agree with Molina that basically, these are what this is a 2023. This is the last sitting paper. Last sitting paper that was a question number. That was a question number. You see, this is exactly that question. The model paper literally has just collected some concepts in all these uh, part papers of yours. You see, this is the same question. If you check last sitting, this was a question number five, part B. Last sitting, this was a question number five, part B. Last sitting paper, question number five, part B. So that is a what you have in, in our model paper, part B. The aspect of capital gain, capital gain tax. So let me take you through this capital gain quickly before we look at the question so that you have the concept right. Let us start with that. That is a block revision question number three. In our case, we are looking at uh, capital gain tax. What you are referring to the CGT. So here we are having capital gain. So anytime I use this, you are thinking of capital gain. Ideally, you should understand that uh, basically, these are gains that come as a result of sale of property. Capital gain basically in this case we're looking at it as a gain on sale of property. Gain on sale of property. 
gain on sale of property. This is what we are referring to as a capital gain. And this property must have been purchased, or rather in this case, you are looking at it in a sense like this will apply for any property that was there from 2016, actually 2017. The property that basically was in Kenya within 2017, or rather the aspect of uh, if you're purchasing that property for 2017. Regardless of when it was uh, purchased, or rather regardless of when it was uh, established in Kenya, as long as you as a buyer, you're purchasing, or you as a seller, you're selling your property 2017 onwards up to date. In this case, it is going, it, we are going to have what you're referring to what, as capital gain. Now, the tax on this gain, the tax on this gain, the tax on the gain, the tax on this gain, which you are talking of it as the tax on the capital gain, now what you're referring to as what? As CGT, capital gain tax. I'm giving you guys in summary. I'm giving you guys in summary. The gain, or rather the tax on this gain, is what you're referring to it as CGT. And this tax is usually at the rate of, it is at the rate of five percent and this five percent is a final tax this five percent is a final is a final tax so you're saying that anytime you're talking of capital gain we are looking at a gain on sale of property and this transaction must be conducted of course or that transaction must be from 2016 onwards then the tax on this gain, which is capital gain, is now what you are referring to as capital gain tax, CGT. This tax is usually at the rate of 5%. And this 5%, my good students, it is a final tax. It is a final tax. It is a final tax. You should master that. Then, the question would be, Molimu, how am I going to determine this capital gain. To determine your capital gain, my good students, to determine your capital gain, you should have this in mind. We will be talking of the transfer value, transfer value minus adjusted cost. Transfer value minus adjusted cost will give us our capital gain. Transfer value here minus our adjusted cost will give us our capital gain. That is what must stick at the back of your mind. That for us to determine our capital gain, I'm talking of transfer value minus adjusted cost. Now, how will you determine your transfer value, my dear students? How will you determine your transfer value? Transfer value is what you are receiving from sales. So this will include the aspect of the sales proceeds, sales proceeds, sales proceeds, mark that very well, sales proceeds. You less any form of incidental cost. You less incidental cost. And make sure you're asking a question where you're where not understanding incidental cost. What are the examples of incidental costs? You want to sell, you're going to involve a lawyer. You're going to pay what? Legal fees. You're going to pay legal fees. You want to sell this product. You want to sell this property. Maybe you need to value it. So in this case, you're going to pay valuation fee. My good students, you want to sell this product. What are you going to do? You're going to engage, you're going to engage probably a person who is going to look for clients for you. In this case, you're going to involve who? Agent. So, having our transfer value, what I am receiving, I deduct our incidental cost. And these are the examples of incidental cost. These are the examples of incidental, incidental costs. These are the examples of incidental costs. Mm -hmm. 
After that, the next meeting was well, the next item here to see, of course, we'll be looking at we'll be looking at the aspect to do with the aspect basically to do with the adjusted cost. How are you going to achieve your adjusted cost? Again, that is simple. For you to determine or for you to compute your adjusted cost, how are you going to work it out? We are going to talk of cost of acquisition here. Cost of acquisition. Cost of acquisition. Or purchase. Of acquisition or purchase. We add. Okay. We add incidental costs. We add incidental, incidental costs. We add incidental costs. So we add incidental costs here. And what will incidental costs be doing? Again, the same case, like legal, okay, valuation, agents commission, etc. After I have done all this, we are going to deduct any capital allowance that was granted earlier on. We left capital allowances that was granted earlier on, such as investment deduction, such as access to do with IBD and the rest. So this is what you are going to do. This is what you are going to consider capital allowance. So literally, that is to say, for me to determine my capital gain, I should be having my transfer value. And for us to determine our transfer value, we are talking of sales process minus incidental cost. After that, be the next item we want, adjusted cost. How do you determine your adjusted cost? That is cost of acquisition or purchase plus our incidental cost minus capital allowance. Any question on that? Any question on that? I want us to be very comfortable before we proceed. So this is a summary. I've given you a summary, the whole summary of capital gain without so many notes, but main concepts to understand. Me, I'm very sure if you have this in mind, you see that question. You can easily handle that question very, very easily. You can easily handle that question, even without any other any other concept. And actually, these are the main concepts in relation to this. The other question that I give you might be asked is the exemptions of capital gain tax. The exemptions of capital gain tax. That can come as a theory. What are the exemptions of capital gain tax? What are the exemptions of capital gain tax? But before we go there, let us look at this question of ours and let us solve that question now. Let us look at this question. The question is from our model paper question number three. The same question you can get it in April 2023. Question number five. The same question you can get it in April 2023. Question number question number five. The same same question. So this is what you are having. Let us go through this question. We are told that Chebe Abdallah disposed of his property in September 2022. For how much? 18.5. Mm -hmm. The property consisted of a piece of land he had bought in 2007 for 1.3. He had incurred legal cost of 650 on his transfer in addition to stamp duty of 13,000. He put up a hotel building at a cost of 9.8 and was completed in two weeks. A local politician made a claim to the property in 2011. Sheba Abdallah filed a suit against her and won having spent legal charges amounting to 3.4050 on the case. 
then these notes were sold. The following costs were incurred to dispose of the property. So these are the calls that are given. A good example is telling us here that during the existence of the hotel business, the building had been allowed investment deduction amounting to the coach. The capital gain tax rate during the year was 5%. We are required here to compute the capital gain, if any, payable by Shady Abdallah to the disposal of his property. Citing reason identify with which of the following forms Chebe will use to find a chart on transactions in B1 above. If we'd be having time, I could have shown you this practically. But we're doing it for revision. So these are questions that we're given. Our task here is to identify our transfer value. What should your transfer value constitute of? Your transfer value will constitute of the sales process. You left any incidental cost that we can come. Then we consider the adjusted cost. That is cost of acquisition plus any incidental cost that we incur. So here is what you're going to do. We have it right and we have everything. Shelly Abdallah deposit of his property. So this is the amount that I use, the sales proceeds. <clears throat> Whereby, regardless of what it costs. What it consists in this case, we are told that of course uh, the property consists of a piece of land. We had bought in 2007 for 1.3. We had incurred legal costs. These are now the incidental costs. These were on purchase. The property consists of a piece of land. We had bought in 2007 at 1.3. Now, this examine is giving us what our component of adjusted right. We had incurred legal costs of this much. Some duty or that put up ourselves mm -hmm. at a cost of 9.8. These are all aspects do is adjusted. Abdallah filed a suit against these are legal. So, what you are going to do first here is to identify our transfer value by this student. That's our first task here. Our transfer value. Okay. You'll find that this question is basically very simple. And you're given how many marks? Let us see how much you're given. You're given how many marks in this case? You're given, uh, let's say you're given five marks. That we were six marks. These are marks that can take you places you've never been before. These are marks that can take you places you've never been before. These are Kuvukisha, Daraja, Kwenda, Upando, Mugene. These are Kuvukisha, Daraja, when they're up, when they advanced level. The Russia, the Raja, when they advance level. So this is a what we are going to do. Let us start by computing our transfer value. Let us start by computing our transfer value. Starting with our sales proceeds. Uh huh. Should I leave the question? Uh, Projected or uh, should I remove the question? We see the body, uh, all of it. See all the question. You can use uh, the question. Remove the question. Remove the questions because you have it in other part. Right? So we are starting with our sales proceeds. Our sales proceeds basically there. I was given that figure of uh, 15 coin. So these are what I was given. That is, uh, of course, uh, let me open the question. So I was given basically 18.5. Uh -huh. Incidental costs. The following costs were incurred to dispose of the property. Incidental cost that we incurred, we had valuation cost, valuation cost, I'm given a figure of 247,000. We are having advertisement. Fifty two thousand. We having 
commission that we paid amounting to 1850. So that at the end of the day, what should be your incident for that's what you want to determine. A total incidental cost, we should be talking of 247,000 plus 52 plus 1850 here. That should give me 2149, kindly confirm. Being our incidental cost, we need to do what to deduct. So that's 18.5 minus incidental cost, I should be having 16351. 16, 3, 5, 1. Mm -hmm. Believe me that we are achieving the same results. Adjusted cost. So this is our key B, transfer value. The next component is what our adjusted cost. What will we be having as our adjusted cost here? Adjusted cost, we can clearly see that the property consisted of a piece of land. So, land, which we purchased at how much, my good students? We purchased this land at 1.3. Uh -huh. He had incurred a legal cost of 650. Legal cost of 615 purchasing that. Mm -hmm. On its transfer, in addition to stamp duty of 13,000, stamp duty. Of 13,000. Uh -huh. He put up a hotel building at a cost of 9.8. At a cost of 9.8. So, this is uh, basically a uh, hotel. We put up an hotel at a cost of 9.8. So, this is a building. How much there? 9.8. A local politician laid claim to the property in 2011. Sheba Abdallah filed a suit. So this is a lawsuit which she won. Legal cost that was incurred amounted to 34.50. The next item you are told that it was a uh, allowance, investment allow investment deduction that she had. So first of all, how much will this give us? Give us the total of these items where I am having 1.3. And if you're having a question or if you're not understanding, don't allow Mwalimu to proceed and yet you're not getting. If you're having a question, make sure that you download, you ask that question. Make sure that you ask a question. So maybe 1.3 plus 650 plus 13 plus 9.8 plus 34.50 here, which I'm getting 15 to 13. 15 to 13. But remember, we had incurred what? We had incurred investment deductions. There were some which were deducted. And that for our formula, we see we need to do what we need to deduct that deduction. And this deduction that we incurred amounted to how much? The deduction that we incurred amounted to seven quotes. So if you have just come here very confidently, I did that seven quotes. So that as at the end of the day, what will we be having here, my two students? I'll be having 15 to 13 minus seven quotes. I'm having what? 14. You can confirm 473. So I'm having our AC, adjusted cost. What is the next question? The next part is to compute our 
captured in and of course charts there in so therefore I'm going to have my capital G remote. Remember this case, you can just do it with your calculator. You can just do it with your calculator directly. So I'm having 16, 351. I believe you guys, you are seeing where the, these figures come from. Minus 14, minus 14, or 73,000. So this will give us our capital gain of how much? This will give us a capital gain of 16, 351 minus answer. Give me a capital gain of 1,878,000. Exactly what we just, uh, uh, what I get it, you guys, you are transfer value minus adjustment. So it's as simple as that, right? So what about your CGT now? A capital gain tax, we say it is always available for four or five percent. So at the same point, you take your five percent and take this as a change. Where we can agree and say that therefore my capital gain will be 93,900. Another question, any question guys at that point, I'll give you time to hear that. Another question, where you feel like uh, you're not understanding, where you feel like uh, you're not understanding, this is the best time to answer to ask your question where you feel you're not understanding is the best time to ask that question right 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 now uh -huh. yeah that yeah that yeah that take your time yeah that take your time Do you have that with your time? Clear that, clear that, clear that, take your time. If you are having a portion, this is the best thing. You're having your question, you're the best thing to Okay, sir. Yes, look, any question? I'm okay. Done. Any question? I'm okay, sir. Questions? Any question? Yes. Why did the cost of building the hotel be become an incidental cost for 
uh, for purchase. Yeah, more, this is a, this is a, this is a proper support. This is not even a, 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 a this is not even a this is a incident. It's only that we have to mix them up. This is a this is a property. This is a property. The incidental costs are these aspects do is a legal stamp, actually legal stamp, and uh, another basically legal cost. These are property, these are property. Cost of acquisition or purchase. Remember what we've written, cost of acquisition slash purchase, right? Then we add incidental cost. So this was the cost of acquiring the land or other purchase of land. This is the cost of constructing our constructing our building. So it's only that we taking them together. That's all. Is that clear now? Yes, yes. Great. Lisa, let us only let us only Lisa. I'm good, so the question was clearly understood. Great. No question. Units, let us only. I believe. Okay. Yes. Uh, now, uh, a quick one. Eh? Yes, please. Apart from this uh, way, mm -hmm. the end of the that the examiner can bring the question, or uh, this is the best way that they can do. This is the most complicated way that they can bring a question to start with. Me. The other way is you just before like this is the cost of acquisition. These are the incidental okay. costs. This is a cost of acquisition, these are essential costs. So it's only that this question, the examiner kind of, you see, he was giving us a statement, he was trying to mix you here and there, but so long as you're having the concept right, things is just clear. So this is uh, the most complicated, uh, maybe aspect of a uh, mix up that we can give you as a student. Giving you a statement, you'll realize that he gave us our sales proceeds at the beginning of the sentence. Then the incidental cost in relation to the sales cost the So there's no other way that they can twist that to gain question more than that. Okay, thank you. Musa, Musa, wanna follow me? Ah, well, I'm happy to be late, so not getting what you're saying. Okay, basically, I'm going to share this video. You're going to take it out. We are looking at uh. We, we are looking at uh, our model paper question number three, part B, the same question was tested last sitting. The concept to do with the capital gain, that is under, of course, the taxation of income of persons. So you have the model paper, Musa? Yes. So model paper question number, question number three, part B. That same, same question, that same, same question basically was uh, tested last sitting April 2023. So that is exactly what you are looking at. And uh, the concept of the cut should be cut. So it will be important that uh, at least uh, after this you go through uh you go through the video clearly so that at least you get to understand what is just basically looked at. Mm -hmm. So in this case, let us go to this bit, see what you're asked. The beauty part is this stuff. We are always very, very good in uh, kind of our practical. Now see what the examiner is asking us. The examiner here came and asked us this question, but taking a reason, identify which of the following forms should be used to file returns on transactions in B1 above. So you've seen that this person is having a tax to pay. So which form are we going to use? We are given three forms here. Capital gain tax one, capital gain, capital gain tax two, fee, capital gain tax uh, three. That is form. These are basically the form that you normally tend to use. So in this case, you'll find that uh, I'm having a tax to pay. So because I'm having a tax to pay, the form that you're going to use is CGT2P. 
that's the form that normally tends to use to file our returns. That is CGT2P. That's the form that normally tends to use to file our, our returns. So basically, that is what's on. That is a word to be the comma CGT to finish what you're going to, to use. But I'm not going to leave you there. I want to explain to you all this form, right? So, in that case, let us explain this form number one so that maybe in the event you might be asked, what does this form use? To, uh, maybe how, how do you use this form in chapter three? You never know. So, we start by explaining the first form CGT, CGT1, capital gain tax one. That's the form. So let us explain it. So in this case, we're going to use the CGTTP, but I want us to basically understand the other forms as well. Okay. From having capital gain tax form number one. We can mention something of this and say, we can mention something of this and say that uh, these are form used for the declaration of capital gain tax liability. We are form used for the declaration of capital tax liability. Of capital tax liability. Mm -hmm. The other form which you are referring to as CGTTP. We can often say that uh, these are form used to report provisional capital gain tax. These are form used to report provisional capital gain tax. These are form used to these are form used to report provisional capital gain tax. Mm -hmm. Form used to report provisional capital gain tax. Mm -hmm. Then CGT. Three CGT three. These are form used for claiming capital gain tax reliefs or exemptions. Form used to claim. Form used for uh, claiming. Form used for claiming capital gain tax reliefs or exemptions. Form used for claiming capital gains tax reliefs or exemptions. Form used for claiming capital gain tax relief or exemptions. So those are the forms. Those are the forms. So in this case, we've agreed that uh, if you know, you are honest with yourself that uh, you're not sure the nose that you're using. You're not sure if you're using a updated nose or are you using your own nose kindly. Let me know. I share with you the updated notes in relation to the theory, the, the aspect of public finance. Remember, we mentioned. Then the other areas to do with aspect to do with the bit of taxation in terms of introductory introduct part. So if you're not sure of the notes that you're using, let Molimu know. I share with you this basically the updated notes in relation to them. So you say that our classes will be usually. For, for tax, that is for tax. Management accounting, management accounting is what read. That is the Mondays and Tuesdays. This is management accounting, Mondays and Tuesdays from six to eight. Tax, tax you say Wednesdays and Thursdays, Wednesdays and Thursdays, basically from uh, again from six to eight. For those who are doing other papers, FR. FR on Mondays and Tuesdays from 8 to 10, that is financial reporting. Financial management, like today, immediately after this, I'm having man financial management. So financial management, financial management, Wednesdays and Thursdays from 8 
to 10. So this is our schedule for our revision. This is our schedule for our revision. Management accounting, Monday and Tuesday, 6 to 8. Tax, Wednesday and Thursday, 6 to 8. FR, Monday and Tuesday, 8 to 10. FM, Wednesday and Tuesday, 8 to 10. So that's it for today. If you don't have the updated notes in relation to public finance, just to wrap me, I share. Then in that case, I think we're going to meet for a May on a Monday. For those who want to join FM, you can contact Molimo Igaio 